In this video, I'd like to take a look at how to read that schematic that's mounted inside the door of your Vista 20P panel. In this example, let's say we're going to add a sensor to zone number 7. These circles represent three different sensors that you can install on your loop. It can actually be any sensor. I'm just showing the door and window read switch for simplicity. If you'll take a look at your sensor, you'll notice it has some writing on it. That writing corresponds to the electrical contacts on the opposite side of the sensor. The contact labeled COM, which stands for common, is the top circle on your first sensor. The second circle on your schematic corresponds to the sensor electrical contact labeled NC, or normally closed. These sensors are wired in a series configuration. What this means is, as the electricity leaves contact number 18, it has to travel through all of your switches one at a time, in order. If all of your switches are closed, the electricity then returns back to the VISTA panel through contact number 19, and it tells the panel that that loop is OK, or in other words, no alarm condition. If one of your sensors should happen to detect an intrusion, such as someone opening a door, the switch for that sensor opens. The electricity can no longer get past that switch. Your return contact number 19 will notice the absence of the electricity and set off the alarm. Here's the really nice thing about this feature. You can have multiple sensors in one room. For example, you can have a read switch to let you know if someone opened the window, and a glass breakage detector to let you know if someone broke the window. Either switch being activated will cause an alarm condition. Now, despite what the schematic shows, you are not limited to two sensors per loop. Let's say you had a room that had two doors and a window. You could have four or more sensors to cover it. Let's look at two different ways you can wire those sensors. You can run the wiring from the Vista to each sensor in turn, then run the return wire back to the Vista. This method works fine, but makes it very difficult to do improvements or future changes. Or you could do it the way I did it. I installed a junction box. Inside this box are several terminal boards. Route both of your loop wires from the Vista up to the junction box, then a set of wires from each of your sensors. At this point, finishing the circuit is a simple matter of hooking up jumpers in the junction box. You can even install your end-of-line resistor in here. Installation of the resistor is as simple as loosening and tightening a couple of screws. You can see it only takes minutes to build and install a jumper. This means improving and upgrading your alarm is a piece of cake. And if your alarm should malfunction, assuming you've kept accurate documentation on your wiring, troubleshooting is a piece of cake. All your test points are in one location. Oh, and I just noticed something on my schematic I should tell you about. Some of your alarm sensors require more than two wires, such as the power going into this glass breakage detector. If you route the ECP power up to your centrally located junction box, then fan out the power to each of your sensors from there, you can save a significant amount of wire. At this point, I'd like to take a real quick side note. Earlier, I mentioned you could put more than two sensors on a loop. As I listened to my playback, I thought to myself, well, how many can I use? So if I asked it, I know you'll ask it. What if I wired up this circuit? Would it work, and why would I do this? I know many people that don't have an alarm on their second floor. Some of them have had their houses broken into from the second floor. I'd like to remind everybody, because of its size, a common tool found outside is the extension ladder. If you don't have one, most likely your neighbor does. For a thief, this is effectively finding a key under the welcome mat. You could use one loop to protect every single window on your second floor, and it would work as long as the total loop resistance outside of the end of loop resistor doesn't exceed 300 ohms. Granted, this is a bad design, but it's much better than having no protection at all. Okay, let's move back to our schematic. Remember, our reach switch had another electrical contact. It was called normally open. A normally open sensor needs to be installed differently into this circuit. It has to be wired parallel to our end-of-line resistor. The common contact goes on the input side, and the normally open contact goes on the output side. For reasons I'll explain in just a moment, I highly recommend you do not use normally open contacts. Finally, we get down to these, the end-of-line resistors. When you bought your Vista 20P panel, you should have found eight of these resistors inside. When you're programming each zone's hardware type, the preferred type is zero or end of line. Now looking through the installation manual, you'll also find this note involving end of line resistors. Let's take a look at it. 
If the end of line resistor is not at the end of the loop, the zone is not properly supervised and the system may not respond to an open on the zone. So make sure this resistor is the last hookup in your loop. Here I have a zone using normally closed sensors. The Vista is looking for one of three inputs. If it sees the end of line resistor, that means the zone is secure and the panel is ready for arm. If it sees an open, that means the zone is faulted. If the panel is disarmed, you cannot arm it. Or if it was armed, it will set off the alarm. And finally, a short means the zone has a wiring error. This will activate the trouble alarm. To visualize this, let's follow the current through the circuit. Current, like most things in this universe, will seek the path of least resistance. With all the doors and windows closed, your sensor contacts will allow current to flow through your end line resistor, and your Vista panel will say everything's okay. But open up a sensor, current will stop flowing, and your Vista panel will see an open, triggering an alarm. So what happens if a wire gets cut? Well, once again, current will stop flowing, the Vista will see the open, and again, trigger the alarm. This is actually a good thing. If somebody tries to disable your alarm by cutting a wire, and you're using normally closed sensors, the cut wire will actually trigger the alarm to go off. Let's look at what happens with a short circuit. If there's a short across the end of line resistor, the current goes across the short, avoiding the resistor. The Vista panel will see the short and sound the trouble alarm. However, what if there's a short across one of your sensors? When the sensor opens, the current simply goes around the short and continues on like normal. The alarm panel will not see the open sensor. So with this information in mind, it would probably be wise to ensure that when you install a sensor, the electrical contacts are not accessible to the general public. Okay, let's look at sensors hooked up in the normally open configuration. Just like before, the Vista will be looking for one of three possible conditions on your circuit. End of line resistor, open or short. No matter which sensor you're using, the end of line resistor has the same effect on the Vista. Here's the difference in how they respond. With a normally closed sensor, an open activated your alarm system. With the normally open sensor, a short will activate your alarm. And likewise, on normally closed sensors, a short is a problem with the wiring. Normally open sensors see an open as a problem with wiring. Let's look at some examples. With all the doors and windows closed, the current is forced to go through your end-of-line resistor. The Vista sees the resistor and says the zone is secure. If you open a door or window, the sensor contacts close. Current takes the path of least resistance, so we'll travel through the sensor. The Vista will see the short and activate the alarm. This operates the same for any sensor which is faulted. Let's look at some abnormal conditions. What if your end-of-line resistor is shorted? To the Vista, it looks the same as an open door and the alarm will sound. A short in the wiring before the end-of-line resistor will also activate the alarm. An open wire, however, operates differently. The Vista expects to see a resistor or a short. If it sees an open on the wires in series with the resistor, it will sound the trouble alarm. If your end-of-line resistor opens, it'll sound the trouble alarm. Here's where it gets tricky. And this is also the reason why I won't use normally open sensors in my alarms. If any of the sensor wiring that's routed in parallel to the resistor should open, it effectively makes that sensor invisible to your Vista panel. Even if you work really hard to protect the electrical contacts and wiring of your sensor at your door or window, you still have a significant amount of wire hidden within the walls that you can't inspect. Even if a thief can't tamper with it, insects or rodents could chew through the wiring, disabling your sensor and you wouldn't know it. Chewed wiring normally results in an open, not a short. This is why it's not a problem with normally closed contacts. Let's bring this video to a close with one final question. Where do I physically locate my endoline resistors? Well, the first rule is they have to be secure. Place them where someone can't get access to them. And remember, always make your endoline resistor the last item in your loop. If you're using a junction box in your alarm, you can install them in this box. Some types of sensors actually have a spot that allows you to install the end of line resistor on them. Just make sure it's the last sensor in the loop. You can install them inside the Vista panel itself. Using a terminal board like this one makes it a neat, easy installation. And finally, they actually sell splices. You just splice the resistor onto the wire before you hook it up to your circuit card. Sorry, I've never used one of these splices, so I don't have a picture. Well, that's about it for today. I hope I helped you learn something new, and thanks for watching.